Now to the investigation of the anthrax attacks that killed five people and made 17 others sick back in the fall of 2001. Our justice correspondent Bob Orr has the latest tonight on the prime suspect who committed suicide last week and how agents cracked the case. Just months after Florida journalist Bob Stevens became the first anthrax victim, forensic scientists discovered the first key clue that six years later would lead the FBI to suspect Bruce Ivins. CBS News has learned that researchers studying spores taken from Stevens were able to map the anthrax DNA, detailing specific genetic markers that made that anthrax unique and identifiable. In publishing their findings in 2002, scientists called their DNA analysis a powerful new tool for investigation of unexpected outbreaks of infectious disease. But it also gave the FBI a critical starting point that sources say eventually allowed investigators to match the anthrax from Stevens to samples like this one, collected from the deadly letters and from the Fort Detrick lab where Ivins worked. The case against Ivins also relies on some circumstantial evidence. For example, investigators know the pre-stamped envelopes which delivered the deadly powder were purchased at a Frederick, Maryland post office near where Ivins lived. But it's unclear if investigators can connect Ivins to the envelopes. Ivins also had a long-time obsession with the sorority Kappa Kappa Gamma, and the anthrax-laced letters were mailed from a Princeton, New Jersey mailbox just 300 feet away from a Kappa Kappa Gamma office. But it's not known if investigators can place Ivins in Princeton when the letters were sent. Law enforcement sources describe Ivins as a sociopath intent on doing harm and say the case against him had been essentially completed by the time he killed himself. But indictments were still likely weeks away in a sensitive case the government had already botched once. Bob or CBS News, Washington.